Hello, it's Cliff again and today we are going to be talking about colour. So these are all the colours of the rainbow and colour represents life and nature and the world around us. And it changes the space, it expands or closes space or brings depth. And these are the colours in the rainbow format, all seven colours which really represent a lot more. These are just very generic separations. But we're not talking about colour in the rainbow format today. We'll be talking about colour in the feng shui way through the five elements which we will bring in two more colors which is black and white so these are the seven colors of the rainbow and each color will represent a different element of course there are many different shades to each color and the different shades will refer to different elements but let's try to break it down so first off we have red which is fire obviously so fire is represented by the colors of red red to deep oranges and then the next color will be earth which is earth is like it's more earthy, brown, neutral tones like beige. There's a little bit of orange, but you can tell the difference between earth and fire. The next color is wood. Now wood is not brown, you know, wood is not a brown woody color. It's really about the life, like plants, and it also includes blue and cyan. So it's like lighter, fresher colors because wood represents life and growth. And so we use colors like these. Note that the blue is only for light blues. And then you have water which takes on the darker blues and mostly and mainly black. Water is represented by the color of black because it's fluid, it's deep, it's like the depth of the ocean. So that's when you have black. And dark greys as well or purples that also represent water and indigo. Finally, we have white which is metal. So this is the color that's not found on the rainbow but it's a color and we use it very often. So we have light greys, whites is malleable, it's bright, it's precise. That's the color of metal and that's our favorite color most of the time. We like white rooms, we like to paint walls grey and so it has a, a lot to talk about. So just like the elements, you can see that color can affect the mood, can affect the way a space is seen or felt. And so we should choose it wisely and understand how it affects a space. Also, another thing to know is that color will change depending on the environment. So if you have cool light like this, or if you turn on your artificial lighting and everything becomes a bit more orange, a bit more warm, the elements can change. It, it does happen. So we must be aware of our environment again. So without further ado, let's go straight into the, the first color which is red. Now red is a real color. What do I mean by that? Red is one of the main colors in the visible spectrum and it represents a passion, the color of alarm. It's one of the most vivid colors in nature and also the color of warning. So this is a strong color that really shouldn't be used for entire walls. If you do paint it a lighter color like this, more muted, you can see this color looks almost like gray but actually it is not gray. It has red undertones. Let me put it under this piece of blue. You can see the redness in this and that is all the red you need in a space because you should reserve the poppy colors to little poppy precious things. You can see the red over there again. <laughs> This is as much red as you really need and I wouldn't necessarily want to use a color that's as red as the one over here. And if you wanted lighter tones, that's not a problem. You can go like almost white, very bright uh, red, which some people might say it's pink. Well, pink is actually magenta mixed with white, but this is red mixed with white and it's more, it's closer to what pink should be. It has that passion and that romance of, of pink. And if you wanted darker colors, you can use something like maroon or burgundy, which is much richer. It has a deeper tone and it doesn't have the brightness or pop of red. If you do want color, that's fine. You can pick something like this, which has slight undertones of yellow. So it feels more natural, like, like stone or a natural internal surface. Now bear in mind that these colors will change when you turn on the lights. Everything becomes much more orangey, like chili red. So whatever color you choose, be sure to remember that they will change when uh, depending on the environment. And if you turn it off, it might feel too cool, too purpley. So just uh, remember all of that. Personally, if you wanted to bring red into your room, I would rather you use it in, on a smaller scale, like use it on your furnishings or plants and flowers or even some features, not having whole walls. Now the next color is orange. So orange sits between red and yellow, but to me it's still considered the earth element rather than the fire element. It's red with some green and a little bit of green is enough to bring it down to earth. So the, it says between fire and earth and the yellow tones make it earth but it has a richer tone than yellow. So it's deeper into the ground. Imagine the earth and you're digging much much deeper. 
So you have colors like these, like this terracotta, these clay colors, and um, like it, be, because it's so natural, it fe even though it's so rich and dark, it feels normal. So if we take it a shade up, it becomes brown, and brown is not wood because wood is represented by green and blue. So these colors are the colors of earth in the orangey sense. And if you make it much lighter, it would like come up higher into the surface of the earth. If you wanted rich colors, you could go for like yet yeah, oranges like this, which remind us of gold. But with gold, I would prefer to use like shiny materials. And remember, if you turn on the artificial lighting, they become even more vibrant, more orangey. So it is okay to tone your tones down a little bit, especially if you are painting a walls, because they will become more orange at night. Might be too orange sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so the next color is, uh, we are still on Earth, it's yellow, the color of happiness. So yellow is a very strong color. It represents happiness, it represents the emperor, it's a very prestigious color, and also because it represents Earth, it is considered the central color of everything. So here are different tones of yellow, and just like orange, if you were to turn on the artificial lighting, they will become even richer. So yellow may be seen as a very greenish kind of uh has a greenish tone but under artificial I think it becomes rich and orangey once again so always remember that like if I put it under this blue you can see the the vividness of this color and which is why we use it for precious things like and we reference it to gold so these are the different tones of yellow from light to dark and you can see unlike orange no matter how high you go it still has this green undertone to it which makes it quite mild quite natural to use but still maybe too bright for in a, a room now if i turn off the light you can see in its more normal uh, appearance and uh, when choosing colors for such as yellow is it because it's an earth tone normally it works but it might be too warm so you have to take note of the the amount of sunlight you get in your room like between these two colors if you have lots of sunlight you get the go for the cooler ones always on the left and if you are quite if you are facing north or you don't have much sunlight always go for the colors on the right which is slightly more vibrant and warmer like this one thing to note about yellow is that if you use too much of it you should introduce the element of wood to add some freshness and vitality otherwise it might be too dry and arid which brings us to the next element which is wood so wood is represented by both colors green and blue let's start with green so these are all the different shades of green and because green represents the element of wood it's it's supposed to represent a living creature a living breathing creature which is why it is a bit strange for you to paint a wall into the in the vivid colors of a living thing because a wall is obviously not a living thing a wall is just a surface so you should choose milder colors such as these to represent something like moss growing on the wall rather than the wall being a piece of big leaf but of course it depends on your space and what's your intention. If your room is very yellowy, it gets hot light, then maybe a green wall would add that kind of freshness to it, in which case you choose a shade of green wisely. Like this green is a bit too warm, you should choose a green like this which is slightly cooler and give you the effect of the, that cool effect which you're looking for. A shade of green like this is very very nice because it, it really doesn't scream green, but uh, it's very uh, tonal in that sense. And a shade of green like this is actually very useful if you are not if you don't really want green but you want to add freshness to a wall and if you turn on the light it becomes almost gray you don't see the greenish tone anymore but it still has that freshness compared to the orangey light that surrounds it however the best way to introduce green of course is always having real plants not fake plants but real plants because they actually breathe in that kind of life and freshness into a space which colors can never uh, replicate also remember that green paint and plants look very different at night so you can see green paint takes on a very yellowish tone whereas plants at night would still retain that kind of freshness of the plants because leaves are usually a bit waxy so they reflect light in a different way as compared to matte green paint oh uh, and so we talk about remember that we are on the topic of wood so wood covers both green and blue so this is the warmer side of wood it has a yellowish tone is that the color of leaves of plants plants anywhere but if we add the element of blue into it you get something more cyan something even more fresher it's, we are still under the topic of wood but this is slightly fresher more rejuvenating so these are the tones of blue and cyan this color unlike green is very rare in nature because apart from the sky and the sea there's very few things that's actually naturally blue 
which leaves more room for imagination. You don't associate it with a plant like green. You associate it with many things like the sea, the sky, clouds. So there, there are more interpretations. There are, there's the light blue and the dark blues. And you, if you want something more vivid, you can choose colors like these. The most interesting thing about blue though is that it really changes under artificial lighting. So these are very blue. If I turn on my light, you can see a lot of them, some of them at least, they turn completely grey. Like this, it, it even feels a bit warm. This does not look like blue at all. And so blue is almost like a chameleon colour. I will be very careful when I choose my blue and I will check how it looks like both daytime, nighttime and throughout the day. So when choosing blue for your walls, think of your intention. Do you want your room to actually look blue or do you want it to feel cool? If it's about feeling cool, just choose very neutral tones like this, which will look almost grey, even a warm grey sometimes at night. But they are cooler than standard grey. So you can see in this scene over here, you can see the difference. The, the, the bluish tones are actually much cooler and more refreshing, especially if your room, you need a lot of artificial lighting all the time. So that's blue, let's keep these colors away and then we'll move on to the next color. Uh, now b before I move on to the next color, we, we should look at this color again. You, if I pick this blue here, this neutral blue, this is a very interesting color. Under artificial lighting, it really looks completely gray. And if you take off the light, you turn it off, it becomes very blue again. So I, I think blue is a, a color that you need to be careful of and just think of what you how you want the room to feel. Now the next color is interesting. It is purple, violet or whatever you like to call it. It is the colour that's out of the spectrum and it's it's not really represent, represented by any of the feng shui elements but I would say it's, it sits somewhere between fire and water because it has the, the deep hues of black but it also has that romantic purplish tone, pinkish tone of uh, red. It has been associated with royalty and exclusivity because this pigment is a very rare pigment. And if you use it on a wall, I would say try to tone it down a bit because it's, it's such a, an interesting color that it shouldn't really cover an entire wall. Like a tone like this, you can see there's purple undertones already. You don't have to go for the very purpley one like the one below. Just something like this would work well enough. I know against a normal purple, it looks like nothing. but it's And even if you turn on the light, it will look even more like just a white. But the tones are there, just like blue. Be very careful when you use purple. I would generally leave purple for accessories or fabrics or things like that rather than actually painting a whole wall this tone. The next color is actual water, which is black. So black represents water, but never ever paint your walls black because black is way too strong. It represents the depths of the ocean. It's never comfortable to be or natural to be in a black room. So instead go for tones that are slightly lighter, which can show a shade of color like in here. They are basically very dark versions of your favorite colors. And if I were to turn off my light, you can see how they transform in their shade. Unlike normal black, which will always be black no matter what you do. So here you can see the different shades of black, like this one it has a bit of uh, a yellow and another one has some green. This is compared to normal black. You can see normal black is very boring, very deep, very stark, whereas the rest suddenly have a lot more life to them. When using black, I would advise against painting single feature walls black. If you really want this color, you should paint the whole room black or, or like very subtly across the whole room, every single frame black. So it's kind of spread out and it's not uh, overly heavy to one side and light to another side because black is after all such a strong color. And this color would normally be used in places like inter in intellectual places like study rooms or libraries. But still, I would be very uh, cautious when using this color to paint an entire wall. So now that we have talked about black, we move on to its opposite, which is not a color at all, it is white. So this is white. So white is the color of metal, but there are many shades of white because pure white is quite an uncomfortable color. White is not a natural color, you should not confuse it as the neutral base tone. White is a color in its own right, it's a decision that is made. So. If you choose a color, try to choose something that has some kind of tone so that your eyes have something to land on. If your room is very cool, you can choose something like these warm tones. But remember, if your room is very warm, like this, if you have lots of light, it becomes almost orangey, which might be too strong to be considered white. Just remember, what's your intention for having white walls? Is it because you actually want white walls or because you want something that's light? 
If your room has lots of sunlight, I would suggest going for something cooler like this, which are essentially very light blues or light greens, as you have seen earlier. And of course, remember that white is such a delicate color that it will change very quickly under different lighting conditions. So be aware of the direction that you face in the home and choose a shade of white accordingly. Now, if you take it a shade, a few shades darker, you get gray. So gray is the, the world's favorite color for walls. As you can see here, there are many, many different shades of gray. It's almost a, a rainbow in itself. Every color has a tone of gray. And this is how you can really change the look and feel of a space without knowing. And that's where people make the most mistakes. So you can see I have different tones. There are some purpley grays, some greenish grays or yellowish grays. And all of these are very similar to each other. They look different when you put them side by side. But if I just paint the whole wall, it's almost impossible to tell, but it's very possible to feel the difference. So you can see one of them is very bluish and the other one is very yellowish. Now this is not a color that you can decide. This depends on your environment. Let me turn on the lights again. You can see one becomes yellowish, one becomes grayish if I use artificial lighting. So this, this uh, remakes a sunny room. And if your room doesn't have sun like this, one will look just too blue and that's when you pick the color on the right instead. So choosing greys is not as easy as you think. It is not about what you like, it's about what suits the space better. So to choose a type of grey, if, if you have lots of earth in your room, like lots of yellows, you should choose a grey with kind of a green undertone to bring that kind of freshness of wood into it. And if your room is like quite warm and arid, like deserty, then you choose a grey like this. Or if you turn on your lights all the time, you need light, artificial lighting, you choose something that's quite bluish like that. If your room is facing north, you have very bluish light all the time, you choose something that's slightly warmer so you don't feel so cool. So you balance it off. You can see it on its own, it looks almost like white sometimes, especially if the room is quite bright. And remember, if you turn, off, turn on the lights, everything takes on a new shade as well. Like the bluish one becomes uh, just a normal grey. So I hope this helps uh, with colour and now you know.